Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. More than half a million people in Britain don't identify with the gender they were assigned at birth. I've always been a girl forever. We follow the lives of three extraordinary young people. I'm very happy with like how it's turned out, like the scars are quite thin. Yeah, it's, it's good, it's good results. As they come to terms with their own unique transgender journeys. Have a nice day. Mm. Love you. It's not like my mum has got on it, he's still my parent. It's just the label you put on it, I suppose. We reveal evolving parent-child relationships in families where son becomes daughter. I guess you go through a process, kind of like a bereavement in a way, because it's kind of saying goodbye to Callum. Daughter becomes son. For a while, I felt like my boobs weren't big enough, and then I realised I didn't like it because I didn't actually want it there. <laughs> and mum becomes dad. I felt like a 14-year-old boy in charge of three children. And all I wanted to do was, like, wank and play Angry Birds. <laughs> As they face many challenges, on the road to becoming who they really are. I'm in the right body. I suppose I was just born to make adjustments. I've never really seen myself as a boy. Kate is 19. She grew up as Callum but felt from her early teens that she was really female. She loves glamming up for a night out with friends, but not everyone she comes across is so accepting of her. We went to our friend's 18th birthday, um, and then this guy was, like, dancing in front of me, and he was giving me, like, the eye, and I was kind of just like, all right, OK, whatever, I'm drunk, I'll just kiss you. And then... <laughs> um, and then we kissed, um, and someone told, someone told him that I was trans, yeah. and he like kicked off like mega. And um, I ended up having like a panic attack, and then I followed him you followed him outside and kicked off at him. Um, and then he got he I think he got into a fight with another guy because he called him gay. He got kicked out by the bouncers. Two years ago. Kate told her mum, Rachel, she wanted to transition. Since then, it's been a slow process of adjustment for them both. I guess she goes through almost like a mourning period where you've got to mentally prepare yourself that actually that's, that's the end of Callum. And put Callum away almost... I guess I've always done it that this journey has been about Kate and not about me. Kate's at the beginning of her transition journey. She takes blockers, which prevent the production of testosterone and is on a low dose of oestrogen. Uh, for me, shaving is really important for a night out because I don't want a guy to like, touch my leg and then have like, <laughs> like hair everywhere. Um, but yeah, I guess it does make me feel more feminine. I think it's brought us closer, it's given her more confidence. It's taken her a long time to find who she is. And I feel like the last few years, it's, it's certainly not been easy by any shape or form, but I think the last, I feel like the last few years, she's definitely been, she's gaining her confidence. Each year that this process goes on, I feel that she's comfortable in her skin. When I first started clubbing, it bothered me a lot when guys were, like, really, like, shitty with me. Because um, I was kind of like, well, I'm a girl, like, there's no problem with it. And then I kind of saw... I kind of saw it from their perspective, in a way. Because I was kind of like, I can understand to an extent, but some of the overreactions that I got, or get, is a bit... 
the extreme. But yeah, I suppose I've built a thicker skin over the years. No, I do have a bit of a penchant for not really like smart shirt, flowery shirts. Viv says it's camp. Yeah, your style is definitely more girly than you are. Viv says I'm camp. You are definitely. You can be. You can be quite camp. 18 year old student Immy was just 11 when her then mum revealed he needed to transition to male. See, I don't see myself as camp at all. I think I'm really butch. <laughs> but I have, to I have to listen to people around me. They say I'm camp, then I'm camp. Morning, door. Immy and her siblings are now seven years into their transition journey with 47-year-old GP, Sam. You make yourself understand. I think kids have an innate ability to do that. So it was about wanting my parents to be happier um, and kind of just trusting in him. Um, so I remember it being a bit up in the air, but at the same time, it really made sense. I'm, I'm not female, so I couldn't live as female, but what I couldn't bear was other people seeing me as female and addressing me as female. It's really easy to forget now, years later, how unhappy I was. Um, I was to the point of suicide, and I, I was just anxious for my children to have a functioning parent. Love you, Daddy. Although all the children reacted with love and support, the physical changes haven't always been easy for them to accept. I very particularly remember talking to them about um, the surgery I was going to have to my chest, um, because I thought that was going to have quite a big impact on them. Because I'd because I'd breastfed them all and they'd known me as a sort of maternal figure and that, that's kind of a, an outward sign of it. We're obviously, we show affection, but we don't, like, cuddle as much anymore, but then I think that's, that's kind of happened as I've grown up as well. So that's kind of um, not... Maybe not because he's not my mum anymore. I, I, I've, I've enjoyed the freedom of, of being able to be where I feel comfortable um, without looking like an imposter. And that's, that's what transition has done. So, yeah. But clothing, I've still got a little bit of a way to go clothing-wise, I think. So when he first kind of came out as transitioning, he, obviously his fashion sense wasn't <laughs> spectacular. I think I, I noticed clothing first, which is something as a little girl I noticed anyway, a lot. Um, I was always quite jealous of other people's mums having really nice clothes that they could knit. When you transition, especially once you stop taking hormones, you know, your body changes, my voice ch has changed, but I'm still the same person, so they've had the consistency and continuity of me as a parent. I remember his voice just starting to break, and it really, like, for me, that's still a really distinct memory of things kind of shifting. <laughs> that's probably the one I struggled with, like, and up until that point, I don't think I'd ever had a time where I'd been, like, upset over anything. When I was little, he used to sing all these lullabies to us, like, to get us to bed, and I just... I just have this one memory of... of him saying he, he wouldn't be able to sing, like, or sing them in the same way anymore. For me, I think it... it really meant accepting that someone in your life is changing rather than ignoring it, but at the same time, knowing that they're the same person. I've got to go. You late for work? I will be, if I don't leave. Have, Have a nice day. Mm -hmm. Love you. Yeah. It's not like my mum is gone, it's, he's still my parent. It's just the label you put on it, I suppose, is different. Yeah. Twenty-year-old student Felix was born in a female body. He's part way through his journey of transition. It wasn't until he reached puberty that he really began to question his gender identity. When I was 13 was actually a really interesting time because that's when we were in South Africa. And that's when um, 
that's when I first started thinking of myself as like desirable, I suppose. Cause like when we'd go to the beach and stuff, there would be a lot of guys who were interested in me. And then I started to have like the typical girly hang ups about your body. So like for a while I felt like my boobs weren't big enough. Um, like, I've never liked the chest that I had, but initially I didn't like it because I thought it was too small. And then after I explored my gender a bit, I realised I didn't like it because I didn't actually want it there. <laughs> There's another picture from um, South Africa, so that's when I was 13 as well. After much soul searching, Felix came out as transgender. I tend to use the phrase non-binary transmasculine, which sounds a bit sort of clunky and over the top. If you think of the body that you have as like a blank slate and then your presentation and like the way you dress and your hair and nails and things like that as whatever you draw on that slate, then I want my blank slate to be a typically male body, like a body that people would look at and say, oh, that's a guy. That was actually my first day of work when I worked as a waitress for a couple of weeks. I feel like that was kind of a bit of a performance, I suppose. And I will just find a picture of me at my prom because I'm sure you'll want to see that. To me, something about it just looks off. When I was younger um, and I would wear sort of like a pretty dress or something and look in the mirror, what I would see would be a guy dressed up in a dress, and I always thought that that meant I was ugly. After extensive research, Felix proceeded with gender reassignment, starting with testosterone injections a year ago. Then two months ago, he went under the knife to have breast removal surgery. Every time I thought about what it would be like to have a flat chest, I felt like I would be happier. I felt like I would have more confidence and be able to wear whatever I wanted without worrying about what my chest looked like. Because, like, it's a big decision. Any big decision, you're going to have, like, those little second thoughts in your head, like, oh, am I doing the right thing? And, I mean, I had a lot of doubts. I was questioning myself all the time, right up until the night before surgery. But since the surgery itself, I know that absolutely I made the right decision. I don't mind showing my results on TV if you want to like film it or anything. And um, obviously the scars will fade to like white rather than bright pink. But yeah, um, I'm very happy with like how it's turned out. Like the scars are quite thin and um, the sort of nipple placement is something that I'm happy with as well. Like, yeah, it's, it's good, it's good results. Kate is five months into hormone treatment. She has great support from best friend Kaylee, who she's known since they were 11. Remember when we went to go shopping for men's and women's clothes? Yeah, I know, literally we had to go in different shops like, all the time. Like, and you were going in like yeah. new look and that, and then I'd have to go in different ones. Top, top man and everything, and they're yeah. both the same style. I copy you now, don't I? Yeah. Thank you, Black. Everywhere now. Uh, yeah, I've definitely been through quite a lot of phases. To begin with, when I first started my transition, it was definitely more crazy outfits. Um, to begin with, put fur on it. Oh no! Over time, her hormone doses will increase, and her body will slowly look more female. But even at this early stage. Kate is noticing some dramatic changes. What size are you now? I've got like triple A. <laughs> triple A. At least they're growing though, aren't they, because of the um, hormones? It definitely was more um, an important moment when I got my first bra. Um, yeah. Right, so it's not still my mum's. Yeah. Makes you feel more feminine, doesn't it, when you wear a bra and pants and what have you? Yeah. 
when you make girl clothes? Oh, it made me feel really weird when I didn't have boobs. It was like, I don't know, I just, I just felt like a boy and I didn't feel right. I felt really weird. Yeah, I didn't feel comfortable when I didn't have, like, anything there. Definitely noticed that Kate's more confident in herself um, when she first came out and she talked to me about it. It was a bit, like, a bit of a shock. And she was just, like, very quiet, kept herself to herself, but now, like, she's come out with me and everything. It's definitely you boosted your confidence. We go shopping together, we buy the similar stuff, don't mm. we? And yeah, we're, like, similar styles, yeah. aren't we? Like, yeah, definitely. Twins. I, I copy you. <laughs> I copy you, I buy it, you wear it. <laughs> yeah, basically. Basically. You too, Blue. It's different. It's a big day for Kate today as she'll be having a proper bra fitting for the very first time. Yeah, I guess I'll actually find out what size I actually am. And how far you've come. Yeah. Since you've been on hormones for six months, how far they've grown and yeah. the progress it was going to be for the next six months after that. Yeah, I know. Double the size. So, top it off, leave, you've got a bra on at the moment. Yeah. So leave that on for me and shout me when you're ready. OK. All right? So you measure uh, 32, put some padding in here, B, C, you see you're measuring a C but it could be C. a B, but it could be a B because of the amount of padding that you've got on under there, okay? Yeah. So it's I'm like going to, yeah, okay, I'm going to go and get your bra, I'm going to pop it on and then okay. refit you, okay? What, give you a second. Wow, so that's a massive yeah. progress in six months, yeah. just being on hormones. I literally have my that's tiny good. dose as well. Wait till another six months. Oh, yeah. They're going to be huge. <laughs> They're going to be bigger than you expected. Literally. Uh -oh. Did you like how the bra fit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, with my fillets in them, like a C. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm happy with that. Twenty-year-old Felix has already made huge changes to his body as part of his transition. Not that high, so like starting about here, that kind of thing. Try out, see, see what it looks like anyway. Yeah, I think, I think like that. Cool. Again, yeah. I want looks towards yourself. I'm having a tattoo. It's like kind of based on Dungeons and Dragons because you've got the sort of the different dice that you use when you play. Um, so it's like a sword, but the blade is made of those different dice. Um, it's just black line work, really. Um, I don't have any colour, because, I mean, if you have colour in a tattoo, then at some point you're going to wear an outfit that doesn't go with it. <laughs> Unlike some, Felix didn't start to question his gender identity until he was in his late teens. When I was 16 or 17, I started really thinking about it, and um, I came out for the first time when I was 17, I think. I felt very self-conscious and awkward initially before I had the confidence to talk to people about being transgender because, like, people would refer to me as she and I just wouldn't really know what to say, so I wouldn't say anything at all. And that was just kind of... it. It's like it chips away at your confidence every time it happens. It's like... Um, the way I explained it once to my mum is, like... Imagine that you go out into town and you go out and do your shopping and everyone you interact with pokes you with a needle. Like, it's just a little poke, it's nothing major, but over time, over the course of the day, everybody you meet just doing this little poke. And by the time you get home, you're just exhausted from it. It matters because it's about how you want the rest of the world to see you. It must have been April not this year, but last year, when I came out properly as me, as Felix. And then, yeah, I changed my name officially last September. I chose Felix because 
well, partly just because it's a really nice name, but also it's what, when I asked my mum, you know, what would you have called me if, if the doctor had said, it's a boy when I was born, um, and she said that Felix was one of the top choices. Talking to his loved ones about the life-changing realisation hasn't always been easy. My mum first realised when I sent her a text message telling her, I'm transgender, I'm a guy. And I can't remember exactly how she reacted, but I think it was like tentative acceptance. What she said to me then was very much like, I accept you for who you are, but you know, plenty of people go through phases and periods of exploration, so it might be that. So kind of the, it might be a phase talk, but in a softer way with more overtones of acceptance. <laughs> Eighteen-year-old Immis had several years to come to terms with her mum transitioning to dad. Going through old family photos, she notices there are actually very few of her mum. There's not a lot of photos of him in there, in here though. I wonder if that's because he didn't really like his photo being taken, which doesn't surprise me. I don't think I would if I looked like a boy. <laughs> No, these these photos have genuinely like surprised me though. I mean, if I was to show that photo to someone, I'd probably say my dad. More because that's what I think of him now than anything else, and he also doesn't look very much like a mum, so it wouldn't really confuse anyone, I don't think. Um, yeah, probably dad. Looking a little bit more feminine. I suppose. Guessing this was all on the same holiday. I, I do remember some of this holiday, actually. Oh, there's one. That's really sweet. Yeah, I mean, it does really remind me that he, like, was my mum, I suppose. I, like, I do have memories of him being, like, a, a mum and being really maternal. I've seen him unhappy, at, like, when I was younger and Obviously, I didn't always understand why, but I definitely do now. I can only begin to understand what it's like to, to not be able to be yourself or feel like you can't. Yeah, makes me happy that he can be himself now, definitely. Sam and Immy's biological father separated some years before he came out as transgender. Immy and her siblings now refer to them both as dad. I think like my dad, as in my paternal dad, probably found it quite hard when I started calling Sam dad as well. Like I can imagine that being quite touchy. Um, yeah, he's like fine with it now. Like I remember at my, at Sam's wedding, he posted something on Facebook about being like, oh, you're so lucky to have two wonderful dads. So like, it's nice to see how accepting he's been. Yeah. Yeah, but can't have been an easy journey for him either, I suppose. Your hair. I know, it's ginger. <laughs> Colour of mine at the minute. I think that's when I was experimenting with like, all my hair colours. Yeah. I actually nice. like that photo. I like that one. That's the one I've got in the face. I hate that one of me anyway. That just looks cute. And that's when she cut all her hair off. That's back when Kai was innocent. <laughs> Kate has always felt that she was female. But memories of her previous life as Callum are important to Mum Rachel. <laughs> Weird. Quite amusing. Weird. <laughs> Feels weird looking back on these. You hated your glasses, didn't you? Yeah, you used to hide them. them. All, the, all these older ones, to me, up until probably 15, 16, you were always Callum. So mm. your past, to me, is always Callum. Yeah. So we had the discussion, didn't we, about you 
saying that you were gay. Yeah, it was a couple of weeks after that, wasn't it, that you came down really upset and said you needed to talk to me because you wanted to be a girl. Yeah. I feel like to begin with, you were a bit like... Mm. I, didn't, I, didn't, well, I didn't know where to, where to go or who to speak to. Yeah. I don't think either of us did, yeah. really, did we? I guess you go through a process, um, a, kind of like a bereavement in a way, but without the, the complete loss, because it's kind of saying goodbye to Callum and stopping using the name and forcing yourself to, to use Kate, sometimes automatically. I didn't do that, did I? Mm. I did try. It did take you a while. You kind of had 16 years of calling you Callum. But yeah, there's, there's definitely almost like a bereavement part where it's, it's saying goodbye to Callum. So if they up your hormones a little bit, does that mean you'll start working out what the hoover's for? <laughs> I know perfectly well how she uses the hoover. I use that bloody hoover more than you do. Every six months, those hormone doses will increase and eventually Kate hopes to have reassignment surgery too. She makes a monthly journey to the doctors for injections. Um, but yeah, I guess it kind of was quite life-changing um, in the aspect that, obviously, because I wasn't producing testosterone anymore, my sex drive wasn't crazy and just loads of different things. I didn't, I felt more me. I'll have to have this injection until I have sex reassignment surgery, so, Whenever they remove my testicles, I'll no longer need the injection because I won't be producing testosterone anymore. Um, I don't think people realise 100% about what trans people actually go through um, because it's not just you wake up one morning and you think, oh, I want to get a boob job, I want to be a girl, blah, 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 blah. It's something you pretty much have from the get-go. Um, like, you'll always have a feeling that you're not right and you can never, like, you never feel 100% you. And waking up every morning and looking in the mirror and seeing things that aren't supposed to be there. Since Felix came out as transgender, his mum, Rowena, has voiced reservations about him permanently changing his physical appearance. I suppose I, I don't really understand. I don't feel comfortable with you sort of having surgery and sort of interventions to change physically because I sort of think, well, can't you just be you? But it still comes down to, in your mind and in society, there is a list of things which is seen as a male body. But is that just because you want to be on the winning team? <laughs> I'd like to think you raised me with considerably less internalised sexism than most of my peers. Maybe I don't even have to understand it. I mean, you're making choices when you transition that do affect your functionality biologically. So it, that is a big deal. But, like, for example, take chest surgery. Like, you don't need a letter from a doctor confirming that this is what you want if you want to go and have a boob job at 18. Yeah, well, you see, I don't particularly like... I would I know, never have I that done myself. I know you like boob jobs. And but, but I guess <coughs> I it's a similar thing. I mean, yeah, it's... I suppose this is the point that I'm trying to make, in that, like, you don't have a problem with transgender stuff. You just have no. a problem with... Body with my baby. Yeah, with Modifying. body modification yeah. stuff in any, in any sense. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You don't want, hypothetically, your child to be put into a, a kind of category that is going to be misunderstood and discriminated mm. against. And that's also where I feel really uncomfortable and kind of unhappy myself mm. about the whole thing because regardless of how I feel about it and regardless how happy it makes you, you're still kind of marginalising yourself in the way that a lot of other people, like large sections of society, will look at you a certain way now and judge yeah. you in a certain way. And that, that makes me feel a bit yeah. sad. It feels kind of nice to know that my mum's main concern for me is the fact that society isn't accepting of transgender people, that it's not, like some hang-up that she has about, like... Yeah, I mean, she does have 
other sort of hang-ups and concerns about me transitioning but it's almost nice to know that her main issue is the fact that society isn't as accepting as we would like it to be. Eighteen-year-old Imi has always been desperate for society to accept her dad, Sam, as she and her siblings do. So after he had his top surgery, he just, he seemed so much more confident and happy. Um, and I guess a lot of it had to do with like feeling like he wasn't hiding anymore. Transitioning has changed Sam's voice as well as his body, but he still loves singing and is now acknowledged by his peers as male. But the world was not such an accepting place when he was growing up in the 1970s. So I think that's probably the earliest one there. So that's me and my younger sister. She's only 13 months younger than me. But even at this age, you know, I, I remember being really insistent about having swimming trunks. There was no way I was going to be seen on the beach in a bikini. So, so how old are you there? About four. That's me. That's my younger sister again. I needed to be seen as a boy, and whatever I did clothing-wise or behaviour-wise to reinforce that, you know, was, was important to me. When I was a child, my, I think the thing that really devastated me was going to school. When you're at home as a young child, you don't have gendered toilets. You have, <laughs> you have a toilet. But I do remember very clearly the insistence that I would use this toilet, which was for girls. Yes, I had a missing penis, and I realised at that time, you know, age five, that this was going to be a big problem, but I just thought, well, if I'm dressed in boys' clothes and people, you know, know that I see myself as a boy, then surely I can use the boys' toilet. But I couldn't. So it did really distress me as a child. But I, and I wasn't... I was allowed to wear boys' clothes, but I was never allowed to say I was a boy. I mean, I did a lot of things behind my parents' back, so I would... Right up until I hit puberty, I would pack, as in put things in my underpants, anything, socks, pebbles on the beach. I remember shoving pebbles down my swimming trunks on the beach. Anything to hide the shame I felt of being a boy without a penis. It was just excruciating. Sam's now finally able to be himself, and that newfound confidence has made him a better parent. I think he feels different to my, to my own dad, to my biological dad, but then I don't see him as often either. So I guess, not emotion, emotionally, but physically, my other dad is more distant. Um, I guess it doesn't really feel the same, but they they are both my dads. But I guess I look at them differently. On a number of occasions, she's gone out of her way to tell me how proud she is. And that, I find that, that actually really makes me feel quite emotional because I'm, I'm not proud of being a trans person, not yet. I'm hoping I'll get there. Felix has recently discovered a hobby that gives him real freedom to express himself. I don't like sort of team sports, football or anything like that. I don't like things where you have to like run around and get sweaty and like do the sport with a lot of other people at the same time. So this is ideal because I can skate completely by myself and um, if I do get sweaty, it's really cold in here. <laughs> Transgender guys, in general, tend to have an easier time of it than transgender women because it's a lot easier to fit into, like, society's definition of a man because testosterone is the stronger hormone. So, yeah, now that I'm on hormones and I've had chest surgery and I feel more comfortable in my body and with the way that society perceives me, I feel like now I have more freedom to sort of express myself in terms of like other parts of my presentation so like hair and nails and clothing and things like that 
I think a lot of people, a lot of people are rude about it, but it comes from a place of like ignorance rather than malice. So it, it, it's like, um, I don't know what to label you, so I'm gonna ask rude invasive questions about what you've got in your pants, stuff like that. The one thing which it has affected is my flexibility, because um, with having the scars here, um, I, for quite a while after the surgery, I couldn't really lift my arms up past here. And I mean, now I can get my arms up here, yeah. but um, I can't reach backwards any further. So yeah, it's been great for my confidence, being able to skate with a flat chest. Two months after chest surgery, Felix is enjoying his new body. As for the future, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't really decided yet whether or not I want to have lower surgery. I know that it is a possibility and it's something that I am considering, but it's not something that I'm confident about yet, one way or the other. Practicalities of trying to be as feminine as possible mean a lengthy regime each day for Kate. Well, since starting taking hormones, my like facial hair's literally halved, and it's like a lot thinner than it was. Because before it was literally like my eyebrows, like thick jet black. And then I just use conditioner because it's just easier than anything else. Because it's like really harsh on the skin if you use like. Stuff. Yeah. It was like gathers at the bottom. I usually use this for like this foundation for like clubbing because it's really, really full coverage. It's actually designed um, to cover tattoos. This one is. I think if I hadn't have been there for her, she'd have she'd have had to face this completely and utterly on her own. And it's been exhausting for both of us. It's 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 a very very long journey, um, and I couldn't I could never have lived myself if I'd expected to make this journey on her own. Well, I always knew I was transgender, even since I was about three. I used to be obsessed with like princesses, and like I used to always run around in like princess dresses, and I was I had like I had like this really massive obsession with like. Um, mermaids. Always had this obsession with mermaids. I mean, I'm still obsessed with mermaids. <laughs> like, who isn't? Um, but I used to always say, like, Mum, when am I going to be a mermaid? When I looked into that, a lot of transgender children will identify with mermaids because they're gender neutral. And because of the fin, which is why a lot of transgender children relate to mermaids, which, which really made sense to me then. It explained a lot. One of Kate's biggest decisions so far in her journey has been what name she wanted to be called. How my name came about, I kind of asked my mum, I was like, what were you going to call me if I was born like a normal girl? And she said, she always says with all of us, me and my brother and my sister, um, she always says, right, I was either going to call you Kirsten or Caitlin. And I was kind of like, oh, I kind of like the name Caitlin. And I was kind of like, I don't want it to be Caitlin, though. And then when I thought about it loads, they were, um, my best friend kind of mentioned to me, she was kind of just like, what about Kate? And then obviously my, I spoke to my mum about it and she was just like, and she liked the name Kate, so she, I, it was kind of like a mutual decision. Because obviously I'm her child, so I kind of wanted her to name me in a way. Again, um, a few days ago my mum actually called me Callum by accident and occasionally people will mix it up and by accident call me like my old name. Um, I mean, personally, it doesn't bother me if the person knew me before, but if they didn't know me and they do it on purpose, then it's kind of like a dig at me in a way. Um, but yeah, she said it to me the other day, and I, I didn't even think twice. I was kind of just like, who's Callum? And then she was like, she just looked at me, and I was just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, I literally completely forgot. It's kind of like, in a way, Callum's kind of dead. Like, he's gone now doesn't exist. I am very proud of Kate. 
Um, it is a massive journey to go on. Um, she gets a lot of mixed responses um, on social media, um, even on dating websites and people out in public. Um, on the whole, when you look at Kate, you can't tell that she's transgender. Very proud of, of how brave she's been to go through this process because it's certainly not, not an easy journey in any way, shape or form. But yeah, the, the start of uh, her future now. Let's see where it takes us. Well, I wouldn't really necessarily say it's being trapped in the wrong body. I'd say it's more, I don't really know. I got, I'm in the right body. I suppose I was just born to make adjustments. And I kind of see it as I was born with a birth defect. And I was born and I ended up producing the wrong hormones and all that kind of stuff. I've always been a girl forever. I've never really seen myself as a boy. I'd say, I'd say I'm a pretty girly girl. I like my makeup and I like perfume and girly clothes. It's been a long journey so far for father and daughter, Sam and Immy. I, I've, I've acclimatised to male privilege really <laughs> too <laughs> easily. Yeah. Because it, it is, a, you know, it's, a, it's amazing how much <laughs> respect people give you. It's completely unwarranted just because you're male. I go into a room and people listen to things I say now, which they didn't <laughs> before. But then there's an aspect of it that I find really fascinating, which is about my own self-assurance and self-confidence. I think I'm much more confident as a person now. I think you are too. And you think that has to more to do with... But that's not... I don't think that is anything to do with male privilege and everything to do with me feeling at home in myself. Yeah, that's what I would say. But the process hasn't been without its challenges. Uh, and then after you started taking hormones, you turned into a bit of a moody teenager for a while. That's true, and I re that was so hard. I've probably never said this to you. I felt like a 14-year-old boy in charge of three children, and all I wanted to do was, like, wank and play Angry Birds. I don't want to hear that. And it's changed my emotional landscape. Like, Receptiveness. Being on testosterone is like... If you imagine a nice landscape with hills and trees and a village and a spire. It's like someone's laid a thick duvet over it. I love wax. So you can't, <coughs> or it's just covered in like 20 foot of snow. Mm. So you can't see. See it. You can't see the undulations of the land. I can't feel my feelings like I used to be able to. I can't. You are less receptive. Like if I'm upset about something, I have to go ahead. I'm upset. But there was used to be like, oh, darling, you okay? Oh my gosh, what's wrong? No, what I mean is, I used to feel the feelings for you. Like, if you yeah. were upset, I'd be like, oh, God, that's making me feel upset. Whereas now, but if someone else is upset, I don't... It doesn't as much. It doesn't make me feel upset for that's them. I'd be like, oh, that's, that's bad luck. <laughs> Poor you. Their relationship may have changed, but their bond as parent and child is stronger than ever. To feel my children's pride, or Immy's in particular, you know, has, been re has been really empowering for me. She'll tell me how brave she thinks I am, and she's managed to uh, make a story that works and that is that contains the, all, the, all of the truth in it about her life and her origins as a person. Uh, you know, I just have the deepest respect for that. She's doing what I can't yet do, which is just normalise this, make it OK. I can't do that yet. Kate has recently had her hormone levels raised and is enjoying the physical results. Sam will be having long-awaited phalloplasty surgery later this year, finally completing his transition. And Felix is continuing to enjoy experimenting with his gender presentation.